the top of the top, right? Is this news courtesy of the business of fashion regarding one of my favorite fashion magazines growing up, Vogue Paris. I know you guys are probably thinking, Agassino, I didn't know you read Vogue. Yeah, been into fashion for a very, very long time. Um, I think I've got a weird introduction to fashion. I don't think anyone else has a similar introduction, but I kind of got into fashion majorly through the streetwear route obviously because I was into skateboarding into streetwear into collecting sneakers then that opened me up to kind of getting into magazines which then opened me up to get into fashion but actual fashion fashion like runway stuff um, like luxury houses and whatnot I got into that which is again strange to say this but during the time that I started reading the Sunday Times, which might have been when I was in like sixth form, I'd buy the Sunday Times. Obviously, it's a big broadsheet that you get on the Sunday. It's usually about two quid, loads of different kind of papers in there, business, finance, store finance, whatever, financial, sports, um, home, whatever. And they had a little pull-out magazine in there, like a style mag, right? And back in the day when I used to read that shit, I think at the time... If I'm not mistaken, that also might be the magazine that actually made me want to go to St. Martin's, right? The reason why I went to St. Martin's in the first place was because of this style magazine. I'm pretty, pretty sure of it. So in this style magazine that was in the Sunday Times, that was the era when this guy called um, Matthew Williamson, not Matthew Williamson, sat Givenchy, but this guy called Matthew Williamson, if I'm not mistaken, was the kind of the toast of the town, right? He was a big um, designer at the time in London, similar to maybe like a Craig Green, right? He was the one everyone had their names on lips. Maybe even before that, maybe he was a little bit before that. It was around the same era like Christopher Kane was popping up with those t-shirts and shit. I think I was around that sort of era. But regardless, I remember he had a really good interview about how he basically made it in fashion and he spoke really highly about St. Martin's and that's where I kind of got in tune about taking um going going there and obviously doing product design which i obviously studied in st martin's but my interest in fashion in general came from that magazine i kind of learned about different brands learned about different designers different interviews were had on there different sort of expo different sort of editorial type of stuff was done on there too um different well, editorials mostly in terms of photography but also different features um looking at legendary designers like martin margella and stuff like little things that just kind of gave me little threads to pull on and get interested in going forward and then i stumbled across Vogue paris tools like my maybe first or second year of uni or something and then i just completely fell in love with you know um, Vogue Paris during that time because I was again during the era when um, Karim Reutfeld was the editor-in-chief and this lady called Emanuela Alt who obviously went on then to spearhead um, Vogue Paris was also kind of working in tandem with them together and they kind of formed this amazing duo they took great style street style pictures again during this whole era of street style pictures Scott Schumann this Scott Schumann is his name right the sartorialist he was coming up during that time as well and then you just seen these powerhouse French sort of like fashion editors who were basically the toast of the town this is before bloggers basically became a thing maybe it was around the same era as the brian boys were popping up or whatever they're just great right they put together this magazine called vogue paris it kind of in my opinion encapsulated the entire energy um that kind of revolved around paris fashion week and it being obviously the kind of you know the the number one um fashion week for people to attend had the best designers um you know most of the big business was done in paris during that time as well so it just was provided for my myself like a kid that was in canning town in the hood or in ends do you know what I mean just living a completely different life it provided like a little bit of an escape route it provided a little bit of a opportunity to see how the other side lives the possibilities do you know what I mean it opened your horizons all that kind of good stuff you know kind of expanded my palate and my taste level and whatnot so it was really really good prime and again I think that was also during a time when Terry Richardson was also doing a lot of editorial for Vogue Paris around that time too. This is of course pre-cancellation when he was hot fire, when he was you know hotter than fucking fish grease. This was what maybe even this might have even predated American Apparel. Terry Richardson, but regardless, really amazing. So whatever. Fast forward to now, it looks like Condé Nast has confirmed that Vogue Paris is no more, which makes sense because recently, as I said on my channel, Emmanuel Alt stepped down or was fired or left whatever you want to call it and then the rumors were kind of rumbling in the background especially mostly on you know forums like fashion spot and stuff talking about how they were going to do a major restructure because i think that the warning signs were there already because some other lady from i think maybe vogue china or germany or one of those kind of ones i think she might have kind of had a bit of a rant online when she left and then that's what people kind of piqued people's interest about oh shit stuff is happening at, at condé nest and this i think was also before the stuff that happened at um what's that cooking show channel before the drama that cooking show channel i forgot the name of it that's under the condenas umbrella before that stuff happened some lady at some other vogue 
got basically fired and got told to skedazzle and then she went on a bit of a rant on Instagram stories which lured everyone to think you know there's going to be a reshuffle and then uh, obviously then you know loads of other editors got pulled loads of other magazines got closed down and then they're kind of rejigging everything and now they decided to go with the Vogue France thing instead of Vogue Paris which is a bit strange considering again in terms of fashion weeks and in terms of the the role that Paris plays in the overall fashion calendar is very much so um it's 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 kind of it kind of goes hand in hand with Vogue, do you know what I mean? And also, in general, like Paris doesn't really represent France in terms of fashion. It never has, it never probably will. It's the same way how, you know, London doesn't really represent the thoughts and opinions of regular UK people, right? You will, you obviously saw it with um, flipping Brexit, right? There was definitely a uh, skewed narrative in terms of what people were thinking about the EU and stuff, basically, because most of the media was London-centric. So it's going to be interesting to see what they do and how they basically pivot, um, how they explore um, what they feature. I've got a feeling it's just going to be the same old, same old. Nothing's really going to change. it. There won't be any sort of kind of highlights being put on, you know, designers from like Lyon or Marseille or these other places. It will just be the same old crap that they, that they did previously but again it's just a sad day in history really the confirmation of the change um of course the Emmanuel Alt kind of you know um resignation kind of put the fire in the coffin but this is obviously it obviously you've got a headline here courtesy of business of fashion but then directly from the horse's mouth you got here Vogue Paris become Vogue France um, it says here our up and coming issue launching in November 4th explores the redefines the cultural richness of France advocates for both individuality and community and the power of diversity and inclusivity mm, let's see um, we are excited to share the details of the coming days and weeks and we can't wait for you to see it that's one of the criticism people had with Vogue Paris in general right especially when Emmanuel Alt took over because for whatever reason I don't know why I, I really really would love to know why but these two ladies fell out something happened between them Emmanuel Alt and Karen Breitfeld obviously Karen Breitfeld is the lady with the dark eyes right this one here with the immense eyeshadow and this is Emmanuel Alt here on the left they were kind of an amazing power team something happened between them they split up they kind of fell out as friends Karen Breitfeld then went on to launch her her fashion book which is a bit shit the fashion magazine that CR fashion what is it CR something like that right um, she does that and then Emmanuel Alt stayed and then kind of became the editor-in-chief of Vogue Paris and then from then in actuality even though i'm a fan of emmanuel Alt's styling i think it basically died a slow death in it death of a thousand cuts but i would love to know what actually happened between the to two of these girls or uh, the two of these ladies um obviously not girls because obviously they're way older than me so i show a bit of respect there but the two of these ladies if anyone knows what happened i would love love to know i actually remember having a zine i don't know if i still got the zine i had the zine that was what someone made um, of Emmanuela Alt street style because she was an icon back in the day like these people used to go crazy for the things that she used to wear which is pretty interesting when you consider how crazy people's street style is nowadays right people are peacocking and wearing unnecessary crazy nonsense and she's just strutting down the street in these what Saint Laurent YSL maybe um, stilettos kitten heels and shit right just kind of you know standard shit that you'd see a chic lady wearing in the streets of Paris but these were these sent people gagging like of course they look amazing here in the furs and shit but these girls had street style in a flipping stranglehold in a headlock let's just say <laughs> but for whatever reason they broke up they, they're not friends anymore they've fallen out not sure where it is I would love to know if anyone has the news or the gossip let me know in the comments anyway it continues here it says the freedom the freedom to dress as you like to think differently to put on all the colors on your nails your hair your cheeks to proclaim loud and clear your identity to celebrate your differences the first issue of Vogue Paris will pay tribute to and celebrate individuality a passport to oneself to assert oneself now to be fair to, to let's let's be serious right let's be real if they give me a diversity issue of Vogue Paris that looks like a Fenty runway I'm gonna laugh because I'm pretty sure their office looks nothing like that I would love to see what their office looks like you know that picture everyone takes a piss out of Virgil where he's like with his Milan off-white team which is, again is a little bit harsh because it's the team that's based in Milan and Milan Italy for the most part I would imagine is predominantly white and I'd imagine that industry especially in fashion is maybe predominantly occupied white people I don't know so it was an unfair characterization of how he does business but in general I would love to see the magazine and how it features people imagine you know, trying to be inclusive or diversity different body shapes and then who actually works in the office week day to day week by week i bet you there's no correlation because i do remember seeing a video a video um on vogue i think it might have been was it in vogue it might have been on vogue that fucking what's his name 
that that guy that doesn't necessarily do anything um so was it Derek Blasberg you know that kid right I don't know what he does he just wears denim jackets and looks like a squirrel he made some video where he basically went to the Vogue Paris office I think and he was kind of be an intern with the Melville the Alt and the office you know looked hella white which again not an issue don't have a problem with it but it's just funny that you know how they try to purport to be inclusive but then when you go to the office it's just full of the same looking people i remember i remember that i had the same revelation when i happened to be outside the vogue house which is in central london where i think the old studio of um, the old offices of vogue were and i was just on my bike there kind of catching a break and i didn't know where i was i just was happened to be there at the exact the two quinters happened to be there at the exact same time when the fire alarm went off and all these women came out of this building and i was like jesus first of all i was like oh god man like you know all these hot girls coming out of this building then sooner rather than later after a while i was like rah man it's weird that they all look the same like they all look like a version they all look like they all look like really pretty girls from like notting hill or if for instance like you know Boris Johnson's daughter, that sort of kind of girl, that kind of like you know frumpy looking girl who kind of just happens to be in all agencies, all studios, and like that, that kind of archetype. Then the receptions are these amazing places, and they're terrible at their jobs usually, right? It's a bad nepotism. Those kind of girls just get funneling out, like funneling, funneling out. Brunette blonde, brunette blonde, brunette blonde, brunette blonde. Token, token black girl, brunette blonde, brunette blonde. Token this, token. But that was it. Just continual, like you know conveyor belt of the same looking people and I was like oh no wonder this magazine was in trouble and I think this might have been before Edward Innerfall took over and I think then obviously things have changed a little bit now but that was a I was an indication of like okay Vogue is like you know they're in trouble they're in big big trouble if they're going to continue hiring the same people and no wonder the magazine's gone so stale so you continue anyway let's go on because creativity, culture, art, and fashion are everywhere, there are great vectors, well, vectors of inc inclusiveness and diversity. They've, they've said that many, many times, this thing, isn't it? From Paris to Marseille to Lille to Strasbourg, um, our, in our identity is not born from a single place, and Vogue represents the best out of the emerging talents and voices. We'll build in 100 years of defining cultural history, but meet the moment we're in now, and most importantly, reflect the fat France that we live in today. Do you think this is going to extend to the fashion weeks? Do you think there's going to be, do you think Vogue has enough pull to change what the title of the fashion weeks are so instead of it being a paris fashion week it'll be like a france fashion week that'll be interesting but it's also hilarious that they're saying this because i don't have i don't think i've read a paris fashion week where they featured designers from other parts of france anyway it's always been people like you know from the glitzy side in terms of paris and all the people from abroad but you know our becoming issue launching in November 4th embodies this manifesto, explores and redefines the culture of richness of France, advocates for both individuality and community. Da, 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 da. Yeah, but you know, you know the deal. So yeah, Vogue Paris is now Vogue France. Let's see what go on. Let's see if it works and saves a magazine that was already dying anyway. But you know, here we go. You got to do what you got to do to try and rescue things. I get it. I bloody get it.